And welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and following me as I go into the wide world of pens and you see a pen set in front of you. I saw it on Etsy. Here's the listing. It was from the Ukraine, but it's a Russian-made set from the 80s. We're going to explore this a little bit, talk about why I purchased it. I do like the yellow, and I really like the, the look of the look nice, certainly different, and kind of reminiscent of the 80s, if those of us that can remember those days. So sit back, enjoy, as we explore this very interesting Russian pen that I acquired by way of the Ukraine. So the package was very well wrapped. The pen case was in this cardboard over top, and you can see it was put together with a lot of scotch tape. There was a lot of bubble wrap, and it was in a bubble wrap envelope, as you see here, and it did come from the Ukraine, Kiev. So I kind of felt I was helping contribute and support a business in the Ukraine. They have a lot of other items for sale. I'll put a video link to their store on Etsy. And there are other pens and pen sets similar to the ones that I got. So if you're interested and the price is very reasonable, look at them. See if there's something you might like. It arrived quickly in 15 days from the Ukraine to me in New Jersey. So as expected, are these low-end, uh, kind of small pens. It is very light. Pull-off cap. Feels good. Hooded nib. The pen had ink in it when I got it, and I had to clean it out. We'll talk about that a little later. It fits well in the hand. It's that classic uh, Parker 51 shape to the section. As expected, it posts deep, and it just feels fine posted. A pen I could easily write with posted. I'm happy. That is very much a yellow. Nice, pure yellow. So this is the ballpoint. It's that just push to extract the ballpoint. And the refill obviously doesn't write. It's probably dried out decades ago. But, thankfully... Parker refill will fit very nicely in here and work well. And I'll be replacing the refill that the pen came with. So I think it's an attractive set. Certainly something very different from any other pens that I have. So you may ask, what is it like inside the cap? So we've darkened the room slightly. Bring in the LED and we'll see that there's some you know, clutchering in there made by those little plastic tabs. That'll grip the section. Uh, doesn't look like it might seal up very well. The top of the cap is, um, I don't think it's airtight, but it could be. You never know. And it's slightly off-center, but it's a low-end pen manufactured in Russia. So I kind of feel this is a pen review in homage of Wasky Squirrel, who loves these pens that come from the old Cold War countries, which Russia is one of them. Yes, it pulls off and the barrel just unscrews from the section. And we'll see a typical filling system. It's a piston filler and it's attached to the section. It's not going to come apart. It works well, considering the age of the pen, considering it sat with ink in it for a long time. I'm impressed. When I first got the pen and took the barrel off, this white collar was loose and it was inside the barrel, so I was a little bit concerned, but I knocked it out of the barrel, put it on the back of the converter after I put some silicone grease on that piston rod. It moves very nicely. And I was doing my cleaning, it drew, drew up water very well, so I expect it to do that with ink. 
And we have some friends that come to visit and see the Russian pen set. So this is what came inside of the pen. And I just felt that a Parker refill would fit. It doesn't have this little end on it, but it works well. And that's what we're going to put in to the new yellow pen. As you can see here, I got a full fill. Very, very nice. I put Pilot Blue Black in here. I just wanted a nice ink that would work well, I think. With that uh, appears to be fine hooded nib, I'm not going to be doing anything with fancy inks in this pen. I had to clean off the barrel quite a bit. You still can see a little bit of that ink. I don't know where the camera's picking it up. It shows through the thin plastic material of the barrel. But, yeah, it's the way pens are. And it is almost vintage. So when I first inked it up with my Pilot Blue Black, wanted just a basic ink, and I put nib to paper, it wrote well. It wrote very good. I was very surprised. You may have heard there's a decent amount of feedback from the nib on this Fabriano paper, which is a little bit of a rougher surface than Rodia or Clairefontaine, and certainly Toma River, but I enjoy writing on it. So I haven't done anything with the nib. I probably will do just a little bit of smoothing just to reduce the feedback a little bit, even though I can learn to enjoy the feedback it has now. So basically, as a great everyday writer, the pen works very, very well. And it's fairly dry, so it should work on many types of paper. So far, I'm happy. So to me, I don't usually write with ballpoints because <laughs> they're ballpoints, but just wanted to show you that the Parker refill works well. You know, a fine blue line. And it's smooth as one would have expected. So I'm happy with that restoration of the ballpoint pen as part of this set. This nib has an impressive amount of tipping material on it. And I did some smoothing, but it didn't take the feedback down a little bit, but not a, a lot. If you look at it head on, the slit is off center. So that means when the nib's on the paper, it's going to drag in a certain direction. But, you know, for an inexpensive pen, it still writes very well. It's just a little bit different than your average pen. But that's okay with me. I enjoy that. So the pen and set was listed as new, but it looks new. But when I uncapped it, I could see some ink that was inside the section. And it took a fair bit of cleaning. To finally get, as you can see, a clear water. This sat overnight. So primarily I flushed with water. I did use some ammonia soapy solution, but I don't leave it set. I just draw it up, swish it around a little bit, push it out, and then flush it well with water. As most people have said, water is a great solvent and a great cleaner. You can see that white feed there. It wasn't white when I got the pen. So when you get a pen like this, a uh, Russian pen from the Ukraine, I don't expect it to be perfect, but this one is pretty good. As I mentioned, this is a small pen and a light pen. It'll give you the overall length and weight, 
But here it is in comparison to a Pilot Metropolitan and a PEMBBS 308. The 308 certainly dominates these other two pens, but sometimes a small pen works well, easy to carry around, easy to uncap and quickly write. So it serves a lot of purposes, and I do like the yellow. So there's a lot of places you can go on YouTube for controversy and stirring up emotions about pen design. So some people have compared this pen, well, one reviewer, I'll have a link in my description, compared it to the 51, which is here, no comparison, much shorter, flat end. You know, it's a completely different pen, and certainly of a... Uh, more inexpensive quality than the 51. And here's a 45, just to show you again a, a different style from Parker. This is thinner, squared off end. And here's a, a CF pen, uh, their first converter pen from the 50s, which is also on the small side, which is comparable to the Russian pen. So designs of pens have evolved and changed over time. And these are some examples of that from two different manufacturers. So now it's time for some editorial comments and a final writing sample as we close out this review. So first of all, I think you probably have guessed if you've watched the review so far, I like the pen set. I'm very happy to have been able to buy this from a seller in the Ukraine. And I'm impressed with the short delivery time, a little bit over two weeks to get to my house in New Jersey in the United States and it certainly is a different look with some similarities like the hooded nib and you know some of those Parker features and this company MZPP which has been around for a while not any longer and apparently they uh, called their factories Sacco and Vizente over the two uh, people that were convicted in the 20s in the United States for um, crimes that they may or may not have uh, done, but I think it's just interesting. A little bit of history there. Overall, if you have any interest in something like this, a little bit of Russian history, check out the seller on eBay. I'll put a link to the store in the video description. You never know. You might find something you enjoy, too. You reached the end of this review. Thank all of you for watching. Hopefully you found it interesting, informative, and entertaining. Leave a comment if you would like. Like the video if you do like it. But hopefully you've enjoyed these few minutes spending with me exploring a pen from Russia by way of the Ukraine. I think that is a politically interesting combination. So I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, finding some interesting pens to write with, but primarily a pen that encourages you and do something. Write, sketch, journal, doodle, whatever. So we've reached the end of this video, and we will say bye. As you know, lots of pens coming in. Stay tuned.